Ciao. Game time! You're late! You missed the anthem. I'll sing it. Oh. Back over here. This is your third time spinning the wheel of stuff, isn't it? Uh, second or third, yeah. I've done it Done it at least once before. Okay. Twice. See, I don't know. Because up to now, I know it's only been people have only played twice. I have a feeling. I don't know. I would need to go back and check. I feel like this might be your third time. I'm not sure. Either way, uh, people have said that they like the wheel of stuff. I started I making I started making noise. Well, no, I mean, players, I know, have enjoyed it, which I'm really glad about. Uh, but then uh, I, I said a few weeks ago, I was like, yeah, I think we might be done with Wheel of Stuff. And I've actually gotten a reaction saying, well, no, 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 we like the Wheel of Stuff. It just changed the questions you ask people. It's like, oh, <laughs> okay, because the whole point was to not do work. But thanks. <laughs> Mike Rose is here spinning the Wheel of Stuff for the second or third time. And I'm guessing not going to be his last because, yeah, I guess the game has sort of taken hold. Um some new questions. I hope I have eliminated any of the questions that you asked before. If you get a question that you've answered before, if your answer hasn't changed, please let me know and we'll give the wheel another spin. I guess we okay. should start, though, by giving the wheel a first spin. Are you ready, sir? I am ready. Daily Decision Wheel, by the way. Daily Decision Wheel is the name of the app. I mentioned them because they... Uh, they do a really good job of keeping this app updated, which is kind of surprising. Sometimes it even surprises me in the middle of it. <laughs> Not happening this week, though. Uh, what I wanted to be. When you were a child, Mike Rose, you probably thought, you know what I want to be? I'll tell you what yeah. I wanted to be. I wanted to be a weatherman. Ooh, that's a good one. That's true. I wanted to be a weatherman. In fact, they had a thing one day at school where they said, uh, hey, you know, so draw a picture of what you would be. And uh, it was me standing there in a, in a jacket and a cigar. And everybody's like, why are you holding a cigar? And I was like, no, it's not a cigar. It's a, it's a magic marker. Because, you know, they used to draw with, like, the, the dry erase boards back in the day, back before we had all the computer <laughs> stuff, right? Yeah. So I drew a picture of me with a magic marker, and that was me being a weatherman. What did you want to be? I wanted to be a physicist. Really? I, that, yeah. That's what I, that's when I was, when I was young, uh, I, I wanted to be, I think I wanted to be an astrophysicist or a solar, a solar astrophysicist. Um, and I, I was, I, I don't know how serious I was about it, but I, I really wanted to do it. And I, um, I took, I took high school physics when I was in sixth grade, fifth, fifth grade, uh, which was a, you know, a, a privilege sort of privilege gifted kid situation thing yeah. made the made the high school students really hate me a lot <laughs> um that was my that was like one of my first experiences with being bullied by by much older kids it was no fun um but i wanted to be a physicist i was i was i and i'm still to this day deeply curious about physics and the natural world and and how things are put together and how they work but when i i mean i i was I took AP physics, I took calculus, and then when I got to college, I didn't enroll in the engineering school. I am a proud graduate of Carnegie Mellon University, but I enrolled in the humanities uh, school. But I was still, I was still sort of trying to figure out if I was gonna, if I was gonna pivot or continue the pivot into the hard sciences. And I enrolled. I needed to take a science class, so I enrolled in physics in the freshman physics course for engineers. For engineers and 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 science majors, um, which was tough and a lot of math and uh, was was challenging, but also had seven thirty a.m. exams. I'm pretty sure that's what broke me, <laughs> um, because I could not I could not pull it together. So yeah, I I, I decided um, I decided I would not be a scientist. I wanted for a while also wanted to be a science journalist. That was more after I was a grown up that I thought about doing that. Right. Um, but did not. But yeah, I, I definitely, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a physicist. How do you, uh, here's the thing I don't understand, and I don't want to take too long on this because we've got, you know, two other topics we want to get to, yeah. but or two other spins of the wheel, I should say. How do you know in the fifth grade what a physicist even is? I was a, a I'll tell you. Nerd. Just um, say nerd. It's fine. Nerd. I was a nerd, but I was a, I was a precocious kid, and I had a friend of the family Wow, I it's you know it's possible. I would have to go back and look. It's possible that the that it was my stepfather who gave me this book, and my stepfather passed away a few weeks ago, so this is is timely. 
Um, but there's a book by a physicist named George Gamow or Gamow um, called Mr. Tom the 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 Adventures of Mr. Tompkins or the the Wonderful World of Mr. Tompkins. I received it as Mr. Tompkins in paperback, which was a compilation of two or three of these these books, and it was uh, his effort to write about um, quantum theory for a popular audience. So he invented this character of a mild-mannered clerk, Mr. Tompkins, who had a habit of fall, what would go to these lectures of a, from a famous physicist and fall asleep during the lectures and dream <laughs> about the strange world where bicycles were foreshortened and Maxwell's demon was a, was a guy with a tennis racket hitting molecules around. Anyway, this book uh, was a book that I got as a as a relatively young person and read and devoured. And I said, this is it. This is the, this is fascinating. Of course, since it was written for that popular audience, it did not include all the math. <laughs> so, <laughs> right. uh, so yeah. Um, it, yeah. I always love that the, when you like read something, it's like, Oh, it's science for dummies. And you're like, I could do science. And you're like, you know, you're leaving like, off the for dummies part. You forgot about the for dummies part. Yeah. But, I, but I believe it was, it was, uh, it, I mean, I can't say for sure that it was Bob that gave me this book, but it seems likely that it was. And, uh, yeah, it really, and I have a copy of it in the house today and I've tried to get my children to read it and they refuse. So yeah. Youth is wasted on the wrong people is what they say. Yeah. You ready to spin again, sir? Let's spin again. Did you just hit the, the microphone with the phone? No, I hit. I, I actually hit the table with my hand as I was trying to uh, trying to uh, put my glasses on so I could read to you the next topic. <laughs> I love this app. There's an app out there that you have found, and suddenly you're all into it, and you want to tell everybody. Or maybe it's an app that you've used for years that you can't imagine living without. There is an app out there that you think other people should know about, and you want to say, I love this app, when you say, Oh, wow, that is so um, I, I will say the app I love, and I don't know if I've mentioned it on the show before, is Slice. Uh, Slice or Slice Life. This is a this is a you know, Grubhub or Seamless or Uber Eats or Postmates style app. So it's a food delivery app, mm -hmm. but it is specific to one type of cuisine, which is pizza. Nice. So so Slice is an app, and it's a it's made app is made here in new york city the company is local it would have um, to be it pretty much would have to be and the the, the it, so it's pizza places specifically it's a it is a delivery app for pizza places but it is also a delivery delivery app that is very upfront about its cost structure for the restaurants that participate and it and it is giving pizza places Places, which are overwhelmingly, with the exception of the big, you know, Papa John's and Domino's chains, overwhelmingly small businesses, you know, privately owned small businesses. It is giving them a much larger share of the delivery revenue than a Seamless or a Grubhub or so forth and so forth. So it's a better deal for you. It's a better deal for your local pizza place, which employs people in your neighborhood. Um, and it's a good app, and I like it. So if you're in the mood for pizza check out slice on the app store and and you're in new york no it's everywhere it's well the, yeah but really no but seriously you can get it works it works anywhere yeah, okay, that has pizza okay. places it well works. you're right okay so like new york chicago i i don't know about houston i don't know from houston i know the limited time that i spent in la i don't know how many pizza places there were i mean there it, it, i mean most places, it's going to be like, do you need Slice to decide whether you're going to, you know, Pizza Hut, Papa John's, or Domino's? Well, that's fair. But I, what I would say to listeners of In a Few Minutes is download it, try it out, see if it maybe helps you discover a pizza place near you that you didn't know about. All right. And then you can order from them with a clear conscience. Okay, cool, cool, cool. I apologize. I wasn't arguing against no. that. I'm just like, no, you no, know. No, no, it's, it's a valid point. Like, what the thing, the thing about any of these apps, like Caviar or any of the more sort of specialized apps, right. you don't really know until you try them whether they're going to find some place that's actually convenient and will deliver to you or right. they won't. So all I'm saying is most people don't live within walking distance of a famous Ray's, a Ray's famous, uh, a famous Ray's famous or a Ray Ray famous <laughs> place. Right. Or real original Ray's real original Ray's <laughs> famous pizza, famous original Ray's real pizza. 
man. First time why I spent you, any time gotta, in New York. First time I spent. Come for us like that, Ken. No, why I'm not. No, no, quite the contrary. Oh, oh, I will tell you why I'm coming for you on that. Because the okay. first time I was in New York, I found a place, a raised pizza place, and it was the best pizza I'd ever had. That was literally the first time I was in New York. I had never had anything like it. And when I went back to New York several years later, I thought, I'm going to go back to that place. Was it original raise? Was it famous original raise? Was it raise original famous? I mean, that's the thing. I mean, it's basically like it was like a room of requirement. It was the best pizza I ever had. And I've eaten at so many places that say Ray in the name since. It's never been as good. That's why I'm coming at you. Because <sighs> what's your favorite Sparrow? Right. You want to spend one more time? <laughs> sure. We'll spend one more time. This is it. This is the one for all the marbles. Mm-hmm. I forgot to get any marbles. Hey, what's your earliest tech memory? My earliest tech memory. Yeah, the first time you like you know got hands on something and thought, oh my goodness, what's your earliest like? It can be, I guess, it can be your best, but really, let's go with earliest. What's your earliest tech memory? I I I feel like I feel like I've mentioned this. Maybe it was on a different show, but I I feel like this has come up, and and I've hopefully given a consistent answer. <laughs> I I had a friend when I was a kid, uh, Bradley Konya. Uh, who is today a, a today is a tech entrepreneur and um, haven't seen him in forty years thirty thirty five years maybe uh, it's been a while anyway uh, Brad uh, Brad lived in Pennsylvania and family families were friends and he and I were both you know teenage nerds and so we got along very well and Brad had all the stuff he had all the gear he had um, an Atari eight hundred. Uh, computer which was uh which was astonishing and you know you could play games on it and he had a he had a program on it called hollywood medieval which was just like a a hallway walking simulator that played creepy music i found it fascinating um but but before even he had the the atari 800 he had a sinclair zx81 or it was, I don't know if it was a ZX80 or a ZX81, but it was one of the very early Sinclair computers. And this is, it's hard to describe this device if, you, if you've not seen it, but you can, uh, you can look it up on, on the Wikipedia and you can, uh, you can look it up on eBay. It is a, a computer with a little membrane keyboard at the front and a little, and it's all, all about the size of a clipboard. It's tiny. Hmm. Um, and it wasn't particularly expensive, uh, actually. It was, you know, maybe a hundred dollars. And you plugged it into a black and white, or you plugged it into a television, uh, or you gave it had a UHF transmitter to connect it to a television. It was black and white screen, and it was, um, it was just, it was an adorable little machine. You could, you, you had basic, and you, you know, put programs on it. Had tape drive, um, so it was. It was so cool to just think of like, wow, this is a this is a tiny little computer, um, and I, I, you know, later I, I think my first, com- I mean, the first computer that we owned in my house was a VIC twenty Commodore VIC twenty. Um, I had access to a, a PC Junior later on. First Mac that we owned was a was a one twenty eight K original Mac, um, but you know. Prior to prior to 1984, it was it was different kinds of computers, and the Sinclair, the ZX81, really stood out in my memory because it was just it was adorable. Just it was amazing to think that you could have this tiny little thing that was one computer. Mm-hmm.